Hello and welcome back to Smithflix. In today's video, we are going to meet a person who is working as a mechanical engineer here in the UK. We are going to discuss his journey of migrating from India to the UK. We'll check with him the qualification you need, the job consultants or the job portal he used, the salary benefits related to his profession. So let's meet him. Hi Jay, uh, how are you doing today? Fine, how are you? I'm doing uh -huh. well. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's a little bit rainy here, but <laughs> yeah, that's the usual weather of UK. Yeah. <laughs> you can't complain. So, okay. So, can you please uh, introduce yourself for my viewers? Okay. So, I'm Jainam Doshi. Uh, I'm from Gujarat, and uh, here I'm working on Tire to General Work Visa as a mechanical design engineer at Frontier Pits. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, how did you came to the UK in the first place? I started looking for uh, studies uh, courses outside of India mm -hmm. and then I had two major choices. One was Germany and one another was UK. Then I started applying for, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to do mechanical design engineering from the uh, start. Mm -hmm. So I applied for a few courses in Germany. I applied for a few courses in U UK. Okay. And I was in doubt. I'm going to not I will not get job. I will not get the admission in the UK because the university ranking was so high. So okay. I was preparing for German university. I did my German language. I started there. I applied there and mm -hmm. happened. I didn't get the admission in Germany and I got into UK. Okay. And it was the best university for my course. Like uh, when you go for US ranking, mm -hmm. my university, when it comes to this course, mechanical design engineering, which is like the best on the top. So I take, take the opportunity and came here. Great. That sounds great. So uh, how did you choose the course? Like, uh, do you know from the start, like you want to go for this course or like you... Uh, uh, that was a, got a bit of a, that's a bit of a story. Like uh -huh. uh, when I was working in university in Gujarat, mm -hmm. I was part of Formula Car and there I started designing something and I loved it. Okay. I know like what I want to do now because I know like uh, how enjoying it is you design something and it comes to a reality and it works okay so for us it's like a rewarding thing like it comes to a life and you can see it actually and it's like a very special skill like a lot of people can't design something even they are mechanical engineer yes so, <laughs> so it's like a skill you can develop day by day so it's a really good thing and i learned it so i think i really enjoy it so that's how I selected my career towards the mechanical design engineering. Okay, that, that sounds great. Like you know from the start what you wanted. That's, a, that's you know, that's the first uh, difficult uh, option that you need to cross. I think yeah. many people don't even know like what exactly they want to do uh, for the month. Like one year, don't get me wrong. I have like one year off in between. Okay. Like when I was thinking and deciding and I was giving the IPS, I was preparing everything. But I took one year off as well. That's okay. That's okay. That's nothing wrong in there okay it, it paid off you uh, it paid you well so i think uh, uh, yeah, that worked out well for you okay and um, like did you choose any um like uh, over there like many overseas uh, you know study considered working in india so did you got any help for you know choosing the university uh, or you did everything on your own no so i started looking for on i think everything online is available if you deep a little bit harder you will find everything there I did not uh, choose any consultancy because there was a reason. If you choose any consultancy, then they say, oh, we don't take any charges. It's just six or 7,000 Indian rupees. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, if you see, if you apply through any agent, you will not get any scholarship. Most of the people don't know about this. Okay. It's not like compulsory, you are not going to get it, but the chances of getting the scholarship will reduce by like 60, 70%. If you are too good, then you will get it. That's a different story. Okay. Uh, but if you are like, okay, medium student, and if you still want to get the scholarship, then mm -hmm. you might not get it if you apply by any consultancy because university has to pay them some amount of money as well, like a 10% of something. They make big chunk of money from your fees. Yes. That's why they won't take any charges or something. So I think I did my uh, studies online. I uh, talked to a few people who applied there and then I shot out. It's really easy to apply for UK university, especially. It's like uh, opening a Facebook or LinkedIn account. That how is it easy it is to like do something in UK. Okay. Okay. That's a very good point, actually. Like, uh, even I wasn't aware of that. Like uh, if you use a study consultant, you... Uh, 
you may uh, you know decrease your chances of getting a scholarship that's a very good point i think uh, yeah i think uh, with, in today's world i think it's, it's pretty easy everything is online and you can just go and if you know the university and the course so i think it's easy to just go and search online you can get things done on your own but yeah that's that's a very good new information even for me so uh, thanks for that uh, okay so coming to our next question can you please tell us what exactly you did after you got the admission so when i get my admission first of all i started looking for more students who are already finished their this course in from this university because most of the people what we do in india is we get the admission and we are so excited we just said yes and we come here it's nothing like that you have to make sure what you are coming here for is study you have to make sure how is the culture in your university what you are going to study there is you should check this before as well but i'm saying you should check it afterwards in more detail more depth you should talk to at least 10 people from the same course mm -hmm. who get the job and who did not get the job in uk itself so you know like how many difficulties you face when you come here and how some you will look like uh, see all the success story and unsuccessful unsuccessful stories so most of the people go back to their country and still they get the job but if you are planning to come yeah. then you should check it everything thoroughly okay okay and uh so yeah like um so you uh, studied here like how was the study experience uh compared to india like uh was it more like practical or it was again more exam based like how was the experience overall experience i have a proper answer for this uh one of my after mechanical engineering one of my friend got into iit hyderabad Okay. for the same course mechanical design and engineering and i came here as a manchester university and we almost have the similar course similar subjects mm -hmm. but the main difference was all i subject studied here it was co combined with some practical knowledge i have to go to workshop to make something mm -hmm. or i have to design something and i have to submit it as a project mm -hmm. It was not only like a pen and paper theoretical only. Maybe my, uh, uh, how to say, the project was not like that fancy as from the IIT people. But the most of the thing I learned was practical. It was not just theory. You make it on paper and it doesn't know how it works. Most of the thing I made was the reality. It like uh, I can actually compare the course. And it was similar in when you see it on paper, but when you see it in reality, it's total different. Like not so many people know that. Even I didn't know that before. Like I'm gonna do so much of prep practical than them. Because when we talk to when I talk to my friend, like what did you do for this subject? He said, Oh, I did this, I did this. It was on paper, I released the paper. But when you go to like reality outside of the world, like in the industry or something, if you are making hundred things on paper, that's a nothing like you have to like know like what's kind of short of problem you are going to face when it's practical you don't know when it's come to your like desk like oh this is kind of problem you face so i think in terms of that like i really loved it the university okay. i have so many, i have like a proper exposure to the university uh practical industry everything okay great so more of a practical thing i would say more of a practical thing yeah yeah, anyways, and even Manchester University is such a very big name. I think uh, I can imagine like uh, the experience you might have. It's, it's a great place and a great university. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, how did you manage to get your first job after the studies? So, I applied for like 750 jobs, more wow. than that. Okay. Like long, I'm not talking about the one click job here. I'm uh, talking about where you fill up like 11 pages. Wow. Okay. For application, that's how I get there. <laughs> I got only and only one interview call from this company. Okay. No other interview call, nothing. I didn't even get the first round or introductory interview, nothing. Okay. Wow. Only one interview I got it and I got the job. Wow. And I know some people who applied for like 1,100 job and got the one job out of it. He got two interviews. First one got failed, and then the second he got the job. Wow. So it's not that easy. So I think as per 2017 statistic from immigration office, out of 100 students, 95 students don't get the job here. 
So they go back to their country. Only five percentage of the students, the international students, they got the job around the UK. Oh. So uh, we are not talking on the um, just on the mechanical domain. We are talking in general. Type in general, like in that, doctors, software engineers, nurses, mechanical engineers, civil engineers, structural engineer, project managers, everything you name for it is everything is in five percent. Mm -hmm. That's a scary thought and scary data. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm mentioning this because people are thinking, oh, I'm going to go there and I'm going to get a job. But mm -hmm. it's a risky move to come to UK. Just make sure you are happy with what take, risk you are taking. With That's what I'm just mentioning this especially. You should, you should be ready if you're not getting a job. You should be ready okay. to come to your country. And, you know, there are some other things like uh, MSTAR, if you are studying in top universities, like uh, top 200 mm -hmm. universities, then Amsterdam is giving you like uh, one year of job work visa, job search visa. You can go to Amsterdam and find a job. If you get the job, you can settle there as well. Okay. So there are a few things, really good few things to study in a good university. But before you come, you make sure you know what, you what I'm going to do if I don't get the job here. Okay. You should plan it out properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. It should not be a blind decision. Just, just coming here, you know, and thinking. Like, yeah, you don't know what I'm going to do next. Yeah. Okay, okay. And and uh, like, um, when did you start applying for jobs, or uh, like, when you were using any kind of uh, special job portals or any uh, job consultants here in UK? Like, uh, did the university help you out with a job? Like, for like, how exactly it worked out for you? Let it put it that way. The university don't care. Okay. First of all, university don't care if you get the job or not. Mm -hmm. They will like uh, uh, make one lecture. Oh, you should do this. You should do this. You should make your CV like this. But in reality, they have like 40, 50,000 students. Mm -hmm. So you you are not going to get dependent on them. Okay. You have to do everything by yourself. So I think major website like LinkedIn, Indeed, mm -hmm. uh, Age.com, CV Library, you have to go through all these jobs and you have to apply for it. Okay. So here, most of the graduate job, you have to apply for one year beforehand. So one year is the course only. So when you come here, you should actually start applying for the job. If you want to make it into big companies like uh, Range Rover, you know, in mechanical, Jaguar, Range Rover, uh, Bay System, then Royal Enfield, or some any big companies, you name is Shell or something. Okay. If you want to make it there in a big company, you have to make sure when you come here in September, I think the job portal start around uh, November, December. Okay. And they have like a very long lengthy process to select a candidate, like five, seven round, and then it goes on and on and on. Oh. So I started beginning in the beginning and I, like I got tired after 350, 500 jobs and I was like, oh, it's too tough to get a job. Then I took a break for our, in a January, February for a month or so. And then I started again, like, okay, I'm fresh again. I'm going to do it again. Okay. I got in the, afterwards, but it's my company is small. So it was like an instant job. Like, uh, they, they offer me position where I didn't have to like so many rounds. I had like only two rounds of interview. Okay. Okay. And your, your current visa, like, is it uh, on the post-study work visa or you have a proper work visa? No, I have a proper work visa, tied to general work visa. I'm not student work visa or something. I'm on proper tied to general work visa. Okay. Okay. Great. And for, um, like, this visa was completely sponsored by the company or you paid anything from your pocket also? Okay. So last to last year, the rule was company has to pay everything. Okay. Even they paid for my lawyer, immigration lawyer fees as well. Okay. But when you go this way, you have to read your contract properly because it says, okay, if you break the contract in between, then you have to pay your visa by yourself or you have to return your money to your company. Yeah. Nowadays, they change the rule for tire, work, tire one, skill work visa. Yeah. Now, even the big company, they say, okay, if you are coming to our company, we will give you the sponsorship later and everything you do it. So even if you break the contract in between, they don't care. Okay. Okay. So but the rule change, but in the beginning, this was the rule, like company is paying everything. Okay. Okay. And coming to the main question on the salary benefits, uh, can you please share some insights into salary benefits or the, are there any other benefits related to your profession? 
Okay, so kind of, um, like you know, salary you, know, you can expect as a fresher or a, as an experienced mechanical engineer. Okay, so I would say don't expect the salary when you heard someone from USA is not the same because we have some different benefits of living in UK. Mm -hmm. If you want to check the salary, any viewer. Uh, you can go to Glassdoor salary or you can go to uh, LinkedIn salary. You will get pretty much good estimate to how much you are going to make. But on an average, graduate makes uh, 25 to 30,000 pounds okay. per year. It can change up to if you are in software, maybe I, I know someone who is in artificial intelligence. He got the job in uh, Airbus mm -hmm. and he, his starting salary is 45,000 pounds. Like, Okay. Nothing. But if you are mechanical engineer, is short of like twenty to thirty or thirty-five thousand pounds, depending on your experience. Okay. But mostly, it is decreasing as well because of this pandemic and everything. People are willing to start at very low salary. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, I think I don't have any other questions for you. If you want to give any uh, final advice or you know suggestions to my viewers, that will be great. Okay, so I would say if you are mechanical engineer, come here, that's okay. But make sure you have plan everything, like you make sure what kind of risk you are taking because you are spending 30,000 pounds is equivalent to 30 Indian, 30 legs. Yeah, right? yeah. That's so correct. make sure when you are taking huge risk to come here, it's a risk, but if you get the job, it's rewarding as well because getting a job is the most difficult part in the uk but after you get the job is pretty much smooth ride you just go to job and enjoy your life yeah so do it. come here that's okay make sure you when you come you have all planned out that's it okay well thank you so much uh thank you for sharing that information and i think uh it'll be really helpful for many people uh i have many people asking for uh, this mechanical engineering field and uh I think uh, this is the first uh, live experience they'll be getting, uh, like what kind of, um, you know, uh, job and the salary benefits they have. So, so thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, that's it. We are at the end of my interview. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Great. Thank you.